Hey, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of WeatherMaker. I've spent the last couple of weeks working on volumetric fog. It's been a very challenging but fun feature to work on, and I hope that it saves you all a lot of time in your projects, but also lets you add that extra special pop for your games and apps. So I'm going to demo that now and kind of do a tutorial and go through all of the features for fog. Over here on the configuration panel on the left is the fog button. This will let you turn on the fog. So I'll go ahead and run my scene. If I click fog, it will fade in the fog. Now the fog will blot out the sky if you do it full height, and then I'll explain that in a second. So as you click fog, watch the fog fade in. And uh, there's a lot of settings here, so I'm just going to go through them one by one. Okay, first of all, this circle thing here is just uh, represents a point light, so if you're wondering what that is, it's just a point light. Okay, over here on the right, we've got fog mode. There are five modes, none, which will turn it off. You can do a constant density. You, which is just this slider right below here, which means the whole screen basically becomes a certain density. I'll show you where that's useful in a minute. Linear fog, which is uh, kind of just gets thicker in a nice even pattern. Exponential will get thicker even faster. Typically with exponential you'll have lower densities and then exponential squared really uh, gets dense quite quickly, so you'll want to keep your density low on that as well. You can change the color. I've tried to pick a sensible color that looks nice, but yeah, feel free to change the color. And then you can specify a clamping value on how much fog there can be. Uh, usually you'll leave that at one, but you could lower that if you wanted to make sure that the back of your scene was always visible or that the sky was partial, always partially visible, that's a good way to do that. You'll notice that the fog lets the sun show through. There's some light scattering in the shader. So over here by the sun it's nice and light, and then over in other parts of the sky it's completely fogged over. Alright, let's move on to fog noise. Right now I've got this noise check texture, and we have a scale a multiplier and a velocity. So let's just dive in on those right now and show you what they do. The noise scale will determine how much the noise impacts the fog. As I raise that up you can see that the fog becomes more random. And I'm going to go ahead and increase this velocity a little bit so you can see the fog move around. Uh, if I lower the noise scale the fog kind of smooths out more and the noise affects it less. And that's pretty good, a nice and wispy fog there. And then there's the noise multiplier, which will also determine things like how much the alpha can change and the height and the coordinates can change. I mean, obviously, as you get really high values on that, it, it's a bit crazy depending on your viewing angle and scene. So you'll probably keep that fairly low for full screen fog. Which brings us to fog height. Fog height is a way to tell the fog script how high the fog should be. A zero means it's infinite basically, but you can start and go up. So if you want ground fog, this is two units high. You see there's this nice little rolling ground fog here, which is still using that exponential formula. You'll you'll notice that it's pretty much clear and that's because there's not a lot of fog to look through and that's that's pretty realistic here there's there's just a slight amount of fog at the edges as that viewing distance is a little bit longer but overall not a whole lot of fog now you could add some noise in by increasing the noise multiplier or by reducing or increasing the noise scale but that's up to you how you want that to look so as I increase that, the fog height will go up and up and up. And it really, it really looks cool in this little valley that I made. So I'm going to go up above the fog line 
And you can see now I'm looking down at this little valley here with the fog. And as you change parameters, you can get some nice looking, maybe cloudy or whatever you want. You just tweak things, tweak the parameters, and you can come up with some nice, nice looking fog. That looks pretty good. That's a nice rolling mist. It's moving a little bit fast, so you could turn that velocity down just a little bit. And that's looking really good as a kind of a foggy cloud system. So play with these parameters and make sure you save them. And uh, I'll be making some presets in an update, but for now you'll have to go through these and tweak them until you get what you like and then either set those up in a script or duplicate the prefab. Okay, the fog height is there. The fog height multiplier says based on the noise, how much can the height vary? You'll notice there's a little bit of variations in the height. If I turn this velocity back up, you can see that the fog is wobbling a little bit. But if I increase this, now the fog height can change even more. You'll see that it's really getting crazy now. So you can have some pretty turbulent fog by changing the fog noise height multiplier uh, if you want. This can give you a lot of different effects. Uh, you could even, I mean, if I change the color to more of a shade of blue, you could simulate water even with this. It's pretty pretty versatile. Um, there you go. All right, so that's fog noise height. Uh, very, uh, very fun. The fog material, you'll probably want to leave that as is because that's just hooked to the shader. Uh, you can turn off the sun, so if you don't want the sun to appear in the sky for the full screen fog, so I'll turn this height back off. And we'll go back down in the valley here. Let's turn some of this noise off so it looks a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So let's find the sun. So there's the sun in the sky. So you can turn that off if you don't like that effect. Just uncheck that box. Uh, if you leave it checked, then that'll show up. Now you'll notice it's just rendering that on top of the fog. So as the sun goes down, uh, it goes behind these mountains, even though it's part of the fog shader. And that's because of this far plane sun threshold, which basically means only light up pixels that have a depth this percentage of the far plane. So that's basically saying anything that's really far in the back can be lit up by the sun, but everything else... No, so anyway, you see that that changed things just a little bit. But anyway, leave that you can just leave that as is. It's probably fine. All right, let's go to. We're almost done here. I think we are on performance optimizations. So for mobile devices or devices where performance is like old PCs or whatever, you'll want to. Uh, consider playing with some of these parameters. I'm going to turn off the profiler. There we go. Oh, looks like it was off. Weird. Uh, if you turn the down sample scale down, then it will render the fog in a smaller off-screen texture and then blit that on top of the camera's texture. So let's increase the density just a little bit. You can kind of see what I mean. Right now the trees are fairly nice. There's a little bit of blur going on, but let's change this to half. So you, now you'll notice there's a little bit more blur. And this is using a half. So if you look at the, the scene here, take a quarter of that and that's what the fog is. And then it's being scaled on top of the whole thing, which is really going to improve performance if you want to go faster on mobile devices, but at the cost of having to be a little bit more pixelated, which is why I've thrown this blur on here. There's no blur, which you can now see we're a little bit pixelated, but not too bad. There's a, a 7 pixel blur and then a 17 pixel blur. Now this blur is pretty darn efficient, so blur 17 should work fine even on mobiles. But if you don't like the effect, Blur 7 is probably good. And then if you're on a really old device, you could even go down to 0.25. But if you do go down to 0.25, you'll probably want to stay on Blur 17 just to hide kind of the artifacts around sharp edges for the fog. 
but hopefully you'll be able to stay at 0 0.5 or even 1. I mean, obviously 1 looks the best. And we have some built-in materials to scale down the depth texture, which is this right here. We have a built-in material to draw the fog back to the full screen. And we have the Gaussian Blur material, which attaches to the Gaussian Blur shader. So if you have any questions, please email me at uh, support at digitalruby.com. I'd be happy to answer your fog questions. And thanks for watching this tutorial, and I, I really hope you enjoy this fog. Have a wonderful day.